In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Russia? Right now, they're working on human ape oh, no. creatures that will fight their wars for them. Oh my god. What it is actually a species of ape that are intelligent. Yeah. Intelligent enough to listen and do orders and literally fight battles oh my as foot soldiers, right? They're not going to be human, like half humans, but they're going to be genetically modified so that their brain capacity can take in more information. They can communicate. They can speak Russian. My god. And they can do all of these things. What happened in history was the people that weren't intelligent enough were the ones that were tricked into fighting for them. As sad as that is, but if they're able to make this humanoid ape creature, make them the soldiers, what if one day they just fight back? Man, I almost guarantee you they're already doing that. That's probably something they've been done. They probably have monkey genetic soldiers that they're just keeping secret. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of secret experiments going on that they're saying that they're doing but they've already done. What do you guys think? Do you guys think they're actually messing around with monkey DNA, making humanoid like soldier monkeys? Cause that would be pretty scary. We have an interesting case coming out of La Grande, Oregon. This video submission was from a woman named Chrissy Rose. She has been living in La Grande for the past 12 years. And she, along with her family friends, which includes military friends, have seen and witnessed these UFO orbs all over their town. Now this footage has not been altered and it's literally an orb. They have confirmed it's not a headlight from cars. It's not street lamps. It's not a reflection. They're literally orbs and they have no idea where they come from. It's gotten so bad that the local townspeople refuse to acknowledge or even talk about them. The question we need to be asking is why are they seeing these orbs in this town? and not just once, but on multiple occasions. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. See, it just looks like that on camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is that? See the little red lights around? Mm -hmm. Oh, this camera. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really could not tell what that could have been. It was really blurry, so it's it's really difficult to tell. To me, it looked like the sun at either a really far distance and they were just catching it possibly setting, but there was no like light in the sky to confirm that. But I did see little tiny orbs in it, so I, I really have no clue what that could have been. If you, any of you have any idea, leave a comment down below letting me know because I'm curious to know what it is. But I do not think that it's like an alien orb or anything. I really think that that's something natural just out in the distance. There was this remote tribe in the Amazon rainforest, and they just got internet for the first time in history using Starlink. Wow. Man. And someone showed me Charlie bit my finger real quick. <laughs> it supposedly is the worst thing that has ever happened to this tribe. Why? I don't the, doubt the, it. the chief of this tribe has now put a thing where he's trying to ban it now because all the people, they've he said they've become lazy. Mm. They've become addicted to corn. He says it's devastating their village. I don't doubt it. Dude. Like they're not even working. They're not getting food. Ugh, they're just like, they're literally just sitting there scrolling. And it's like, well, what does that say about us? You I guys should not, you guys should stop watching this right now okay. and unplug your computer. And go yeah. plant a seed. Go plant a seed. And we're gonna Man, that really should tell you something about technology or at least social media in general, because to take a village, give them cell phones, and for that to really completely mess up their habits, that's... That's pretty crazy. And it goes to show how easy it is to be consumed, even when you're in an area to fight for survival, that you'd rather lay around and just enjoy social media. I mean, hey, I wonder if any of them are watching my videos out there, but man, that's sad that it kind of messed them up like that. It's easy to be lazy with technology. King Solomon and the Ocean Gate submersible. Was it an occult ritual? And are they getting ready to do it again? OceanGate co-founder Guillermo Solane is planning a trip to Dean's Blue Hole, one of the world's deepest ocean sinkholes. It is 202.997 meters or 666 feet deep. 
Son Lane revealed his plan around the anniversary of the Titan submersible implosion, which killed five on board. It is an interesting name for the submersible that met a fitting demise because the Titans were imprisoned in a cavity beneath Tartarus. Also, why did the Titan look like Solomon Shamir? A warmer substance with the power to cut through or disintegrate stone, iron, or diamond. Solomon was said to have used it in the building of the first temple. In one story, the demon king Asmodeus told Solomon that the Shamir was given by God to the angel of the sea, who then lost it and later committed suicide. This is how Solomon was able to obtain it. The Shamir was meant to have always been wrapped in wool and stored in a container made of lead. Any other vessel would burst and disintegrate under the Shamir's gaze. On board the tile was Shazada Dawood and his son Suleiman. Shazada means prince or king's son. Suleiman translates to Solomon and Dawood is the equivalent to the biblical David, the father of King Solomon. Interesting. I would have never have actually a thought of it being like a ritualistic sacrifice. I do know that they're about to launch another submersible uh, sometime next year, and we'll see if that ends poorly. Hopefully not, because we don't want to lose lives over just stupid memes. But we'll see, because it does kind of bring questions. Are they doing this for sacrifice, or is it just because it's so deep underwater, the pressure is so intense that just equipment can't handle it? I'm leaning more on that side, it's way more realistic, but I would have never have thought of it being like a sacrificial type of thing. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And currently we're at 10,864 subscribers. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you so much for being subscribed and thank you for watching. I told y'all was so the ocean. The Florida Keys. Since our story on Thursday, we've received a steady stream of video showing the scale of the unusual event that is now being seen beyond the lower keys. And state lawmakers now allocating $2 million in the state budget to study that event. Our update tonight is this week's Don't Trash Our Treasure. <laughs> A marine mystery in the lower keys that continues to baffle. Shock. Oh, what the hell? And break hearts. I'm so sorry. According to FWC, since December, at least 21 critically endangered small tooth sawfish have been reported dead. Separately, more than a dozen species of fish have been seen spinning and acting erratically. We don't know if these two events are related, but we, we have the investigations and lines of inquiry going on right now. And officials, not the only ones investigating. Well, back in February of last year, I noticed that uh, Enfish started behaving odd, like they were playing dead, and, and they some of them were spinning. For Greg Versenworth, the lower keys are more than just a vacation destination. This is home. That's why after he saw that first pinfish, he pressed record and hasn't put down the camera since. Oh, no. And then uh, come around November, I started seeing the uh, behavior start doing that again. So we're in the water between Little Torch Key and Big Pine Key. Most of the activity has been documented in these inland waters. Scientists say so far it doesn't appear to be a low oxygen event. And the necropsies coming back don't show any signs of pathogens or bacteria. First I was scared and now I'm just curious of what the environment's going to turn into. If y'all been keeping up with my page recently, y'all know that I've been talking about the ocean and I'm telling y'all some shit going on, yo. And I even think on land, like, people been complaining how they haven't been feeling good. Even myself, like, it's crazy. Dang. It is crazy and really concerning to see fish acting damage like that because there could be a number of reasons why they're doing that there's there could be really poisonous toxins in the water I, I really don't know what it could be but there's probably a number of reasons why it's happening it, whether it's natural or unnatural I, i'm really surprised that scientists can't pull a fish out do an examination on it see if there's any kind of harmful chemicals going on in its body is there parasites there has to be someone out there that knows. And actually, there's a there's a comment in here that it, it's true. It says when they say scientists don't know why, trust me, they know exactly why. And I, I believe that comment almost 100%. So this Indian guy's guts exploded after a supervisor blasted compressed air up his butt. This incident took place in September of 2018 and it was captured by security cameras. The victim, an employee named Aditya Jadav, walks up to his supervisor, Rakesh Wagmore. At the time, Rakesh is using an air hose for whatever it is he's working on. 
Aditya asks him a question and then he walks away. And as he's walking away, the supervisor starts blasting air in his hair, blowing up his hoodie with it. And then he grabs Aditya and pokes him in the butt with the hose. The vibe shifts completely as Aditya just collapses to the ground almost immediately. He's rushed to the hospital and it's determined that his intestines have ruptured. And after 15 agonizing days in the hospital, the doctors were unable to save him and he died. The supervisor fled town almost immediately after the incident. Wow. And although this is a crazy story, it's actually a really common way that people get hurt at factories. In fact, an almost identical incident happened at a factory in New Delhi only a few months before. That time the victim died the same day. There had also been a similar incident in Japan that year, but that time the air went up his butt and ruptured his lungs. And before that, there was an incident in the UK where the victim actually survived, but he had lifelong permanent injuries. And once again, these were all pranks. So you may think that, you know, this is just air, you can't do any damage, when actually it can immediately lead to an agonizing, horrible death. So yeah, don't try to blow your friends up like balloons. You would think in a factory setting that there would be common knowledge of what to do and what not to do, and applying pressurized air up someone's anus should be one of the common practices of something that you know not to do. So in this video, was that two porch pirates trying to steal the same package? Or was that the owner of the package realizing someone was coming up to steal the package? I have a lot of questions to this because that was just a little package. It could not have, it, there's no package in the world that could be worth stealing like that, right? Like for two people to attempt to steal right as soon as the FedEx driver dropped the package off, the FedEx driver didn't even get in his vehicle and it's already getting stolen. And this looks like a good neighborhood. That's crazy, man. I'm sure you've seen this first video. It has grabbed everybody's attention and instantly went viral when it was posted to social media. Well, I had to track down the infamous man, the man behind the video. And he goes by the handle name of White Lightning. He's actually a miner out of West Virginia. And what we're looking at in the first video is he's in a salt storage facility that's over a thousand feet high. So it looks like they're in the, they're in clouds. Um, but it gets even more interesting. On the final video, they go underground. They're underground over 3,000 feet, and you literally can hear the earth groaning and popping above them. Absolutely terrifying, but I 100% give it to them because this, this is amazing. Take a look at these videos and tell me what you think. You want to go first? Matt? Yeah, sure. Fuck, sign me up. <laughs> wow, that's really interesting. I've never seen a salt storage facility, so that was a new one to me. And if that's 3,000 feet down, that's pretty far down. And the simple fact that you can hear the earth popping and shifting and moving, that's got to be nerve wracking and extremely scary. I had some people say that I had some cave divers in my comments before. Have any of you been that far down into the ground? And does it really sound like that? Because I'm curious. I don't know if I would like that or not. That would actually probably freak me out if I could hear the earth above me shifting and popping and stuff, because I'd be afraid of it collapsing on me. These NASA astronauts are now stuck in space indefinitely. Nah, I'm sorry, NASA. What have you done now? So, this launch has been meant to happen for years. Like, I'm talking years. Keeps getting delayed. There was problems with it, and it just kept getting put off with Boeing issues. And yeah, it's a Boeing. At this time, there was no issues. It did launch, make it to space, but then things got a bit messy. On the 25th hour of the flight, they discovered that there was helium leaks. Yeah, in the thrusters saying this thing is literally a death trap, nearly killing these poor people inside. 
Those guys are literally stuck in space. There's no way down. Like, imagine that. This is what they're saying now, that apparently they are stuck in space for an indefinite period. Like, seriously, this is messed up. Like, genuinely, what are they going to do? Now, of course, everybody working on this down here on Earth is trying to figure out a way to get these people back. And they're saying it's going to be at least another week or two. However, they're saying the most plausible way they're going to be able to get them home is when Elon Musk's ship goes up in August. So they're going to be stuck there for two months. Mate, honestly, what is going on? Wow, that's got to suck. I don't know how I feel about this. If they're really up there stuck in space, I hope the best for them. Hopefully it goes well and they can get safely home. But you know how I feel about NASA. You know how I feel about outer space. I'm not 100% sure if I believe in it. I want to believe in it, but... I kind of think that NASA is a money laundering company and that they give us fake news to keep us supporting their business with our tax dollar. So this could be completely fake for all I know. But if it's not, I hope the best for these people and hopefully it's all good. This is wild. Cognify is a new concept for a prison reform where criminals would have the choice to choose between spending tens of years behind bars or instead opt to have AI artificial memories implanted into their brain. The idea is to treat criminals like patients and permanently change their brain chemistry by implanting these artificial memories so that when they re-enter society, they are a new and completely reformed person who mentally cannot commit any more crimes. The way that it works is that depending on the severity of the crime, AI would design these false memories to be implanted that would make the person more empathetic or in some circumstances make them physically and emotionally feel the pain of their victims and their victims' families. Even though this process only takes about seven minutes to the subject, it would feel like it had been years. Last year, the United States government spent $8.7 billion of tax payer money on the prison system. This whole process would cut that spend significantly, and we could use that extra money on health care, education, and other technology advancements. Not to mention, you would have a whole new group of rehabilitated people entering the workforce and boosting the economy. The only situation that this doesn't sound good for is the person who is convicted guilty when they are actually innocent. Would they choose to spend years behind bars or permanently have their brain altered in order to get out in minutes? If you were in one of these situations, what would you choose? And as always, let me know what you think about all of this down below. Wow. So you mean to tell me that there could be someone out there that has taken someone's life. They could go through this program, get hooked up to a chair sit there for 10 minutes having their memories altered and wiped out and replaced to just be able to roam free again as if they never did anything in the first uh, in the first place i don't know i don't mind this act i think that this is something to look forward to potentially but if you're a hardened criminal you should have a served punishment just a little bit longer than just 10 minutes in a chair and getting your memories completely wiped and, and reprogrammed like let them serve a, a sentence in prison for a while before you do that, you know? Let, let them suffer their punishment because there's families and people around these type of people that suffered because of them and will continuously suffer for probably the rest of their life while this person just had his brain completely reprogrammed and he's fine and dandy free and enjoying life, you know? I also can see the benefits of this for other types of uses and not necessarily for prisoners. What if someone suffers from being an alcoholic or has certain addictions? You can just reprogram their brain to not have those addictions or problems and make them either a better person or help nullify those feelings. I, I really think that would be the overall better use of it, if at all. I mean, some people might be completely against this form of technology because this is like serious technology we're talking about complete memory altercation we're talking about someone tapping into someone's memory and replacing them that's pretty wild and extremely futuristic i like the concept of the technology i just don't like that it could be used on prisoners for them to have an easier access of being free when they've done harsh crimes let me know what you guys think about this because I do see the benefits in it. I just think it needs to be balanced a little bit better. So did y'all know that there was a tuning fork that literally could change the molecular structure of the air based off the frequency? That's what we're seeing right now. And as I was watching this video, 
It really made me sit back and think. If tuna force can really change the molecular structure of the air, what if you can direct that? And then I start thinking about Poseidon's staff. What if this was actually based off something that actually happened or an actual tool? If you watch the Aquaman movie, you would know that this staff shot frequency beams and rays out the tips of the staff. Mm, there's nothing new under the sun, isn't it? That is something that makes you, you know, go, hmm. I was always taught, if you see something in a movie more than one time, there's really some truth behind it. A subscriber commented not long ago saying that they have a theory that their form of ancient technology was frequency based, but it wasn't frequency based using electrical technology that it could have been manipulated by that form of technology where you had tuning forks. So you could resonate a certain frequency to control matter, make objects lighter, things like that. That makes a lot of sense in reality because sure they didn't have the, the electrical technology back in the past, but they had that form of technology. We'll call it frequency technology. That I really like to believe. And when I heard or when I read that, that kind of opened up some thoughts in my mind to be like, OK, I can actually see that. That's a way easier mechanism to construct and to manipulate. They were probably just using those types of tools at a, a greater level or they were using it in a way that we're not sure how they were using it yet because we have not mastered that form of frequency technology. I'm willing to bet that that might have been one way that they were doing it. Let me know your guys' belief. I, I actually really like that theory a lot. This is exactly what happens when I go through the process of astral projection. Um, it almost feels like some kind of gateway or celestial portal opens up and pulls me through like a vacuum. It basically feels like I'm being snatched through a wormhole. And no lie, guys, when I'm get pulled through this wormhole, I'll be moving extremely fast, like at light speed. And at that particular time, my body literally passes through dense material. I literally be vibrating through walls. I be flying through walls at the speed of light. This is confirmation that we do have a light body that we occupy as well. Even without these corporeal bodies, our essence actually is light. Most aren't aware that we're bioluminescent. You can literally see the outline of our uh, light body even while we occupy this corporeal body, this corporeal vessel. You can, that's what the aura is. It's basically the remnants of our light body emanating from outside this corporeal vessel that we occupy currently. This is why I always tell you we are not the body. We are a lot more than the body. Through astral projection, you can time travel to the past or future. Through astral projection, you can access the Akashic Records to unlock the countless mysteries in the universe. There's an energetic umbilical cord that connects from your astral body to your corporeal body that tethers you to the three-dimensional construct and higher dimensional realms. So you won't get stuck in the ethers like some say that implement psyops to try to scare you from astral projection. Things like sun gazing as well as grounding strengthens your ethereal body. There's also various crystals that you can utilize to open up the energy cortexes or chakras is needed to experience astral projection. One of my favorite crystals for astral projection is amethyst because it has a connection to the third eye chakra as well as the crown chakra. Any organ structure, whether it's a sphere or tetrahedron, is very essential for also connecting your third eye chakra as well as your crown chakra and soul star chakra. Astral projection allows you the ability of interacting with your spirit guides and distant cosmic family. Mogwar as well as Blue Lotus are two herbs that I highly recommend to amplify your astral projection ability. Both herbs are smokable and can also be brewed into teas. I do have Mogwar leaf and Blue Lotus flower available on Holistic Remedies, link in bio. Astral projection, also known as an OBE or outer body experience, refers to a state when the consciousness of a person leaves their body temporarily, allowing the person to travel unbound by the rules of physics. In fact, the CIA did an experiment called the Gateway Experience, okay? And they have documents on time travel, dimensions, uh, brain activity as far as mind reading, astral projecting, telekinesis, extraterrestrials, paranormal, etc. 
They have thoroughly researched the astral body and its ability to traverse the cosmos. And they don't want us astral projecting. This is why they don't only demonize it, but they also implement so many deceptive technological devices, such as the 5G towers. They emit extremely low frequencies or ELF waves to hinder our ability to access a theta state, all right? To astral project, you need activity in a prefrontal cortex of the brain. There's a lot of things such as fluoride to hinder that activity, to prevent you from accessing these alternate dimensional planes of existence. This is why crystals like Shanghai is so beneficial because it protects you against deceptive technology that's designed to hinder your ascension process. Technology placed on this realm is purposely designed to go against nature and hinder our true abilities. Yeah, this just leads me to believe even further that we in the ancient civilization time, we're using frequencies to do things like this. Astral projection, I truly do believe, if it is a real thing, that it requires you to attune to a certain frequency. And I definitely agree that electronics, technology, things like that are definitely interfering with those natural, frequency, uh, natural frequencies that we have, and we're no longer to control them as easily as we used to be able to. Um, but overall, I like the theory of astral projection. I don't personally practice it. I do not think that it's a demonic ritual. I think that it's something that we are naturally able to do. It's a given gift, but I think a lot of people have lost their ability to do it because of technology and things like that. Let me know what you guys think about astral projecting. Do you think that it requires you to tune to a certain frequency? Do you think it has nothing to do with frequencies? Do you think it's just something that has to do with the mind or do you think it doesn't even exist? Let me know in the comments. I'm always interested on this topic. It turns out that volcanoes are not what we thought they were. They aren't spewing lava from deep underground the Earth's crust. They are actually the dead carcasses of old dragons. And if you don't see it yet, maybe you will now. This is the face of a dragon that died. There are many other examples of volcanoes looking like the faces of dragons, just like this one right here. And that's because they are. Now let's take a look at Mayon Volcano. And what do we have here to the right? It is the head of a dragon. The entire mountain is the dead carcass that exploded. And all that remains that is visible is the head. Here's another one, Mount Vesuvius. We got the dragon on the left and its mouth is spewing out all of the elements inside of its stomach, which I'll get to soon and it created this mountain here. Now I bet you didn't know that there are animals that actually use glycerin and potassium to make fiery explosions that shoot out of their body, usually their butt. Such as the bombardier beetle, which has a reaction going on inside of the back of its body and then it just like shits out a huge flame of fire. So is it really that hard to think that perhaps there was an animal a long time ago that could shoot flames out of its mouth with just glycerin and potassium. But there we are. Now you know that volcanoes are actually the dead bodies of dragons and there are chemical reactions going on which create the flames going upward and it's just basically going on in the animal's stomach. Uh, however long this thing died, it was probably like a thousand years ago. I don't know. This one might be a bit of a stretch. I, I really like the concept. Never would have thought of that. Like, okay, volcanoes are just the resting spots of lost dragons. You know, that's where they've laid their final life. And the volcano is the after effect of it. That's a really cool theory. I like it. But to say, oh, do you see the dragon face and everything in the volcano? I, I absolutely did not see the dragon face. The third one that he's shown where it looked like the dragon head on the outside of it, a little bit, but other than that, I think this was a bit of a stretch. Cool theory though, that was a really fun one. This mom was checking on her young toddler son via the nanny cam in his room while he was sleeping at night. She notices something that truly terrified her. What looks like some unidentified creature was watching her baby through the crib and she captures it on film. As she goes into his room to investigate, there's nothing near him or around his crib that could be what she saw in the film. The question though is, what was it? 
Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. What is this thing? There's Cameron. I don't know to me I seen the face it looked kind of goblin-esque but I really think that it was just an optical illusion she also did not check the baby monitor when she was in the room to see if the face was even still there in the first place that would have been a nice thing to do just to confirm okay I see it's no longer here or is it still there so she can compare what's actually there and what's not because it could have been that playpen that was right there at the edge of the crib it could have been that dog that was in the corner reflecting over a number of things. I do not think that this was a paranormal or creature of some sort. I think that this was just an optical illusion that she was catching on the on the cam. Let me know what you guys think about this. Do you think that that was something or do you think that that was just nothing? All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. As always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.